Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Welcome back to the ongoing free game development tool series over on Dev Game. And the whole idea behind this is to catalog all of the tools that are out there for free across the entire spectrum of game development, from programming tools to 2D, 3D art, to textures, and so on. So basically, I'm trying to gather together all of the best free resources for you in one place, and then hopefully keep it up to date. Now, we've covered a lot of these already in the past. We've gone through uh, 2D graphics, we've done animation already, we've done some 3D game engines or 2D game engines, 2D graphics resources, 3D graphics resources, and text editors. And as you can see, there are a bunch of other tools to be fit into this list. This is very much an ongoing process, but I'd like to think it is already quite useful. And today, as you probably saw from the title graphics, we are going to be looking at pixel, vector, and paint-based applications today. We're going to add this into the 2D category where we have already covered 2D animation tools. So today we are looking at specifically pixel art, so basically fat grid manipulation of images like this, kind of like that retro 8 or 16-bit style that's so popular today. Um, Paint applications is more your general purpose image manipulation and drawing applications. And then vector graphics applications. Those instead of working at a raster or bitmap level, instead work with algorithmic level. Now there's some tools that actually cross between these layers. For example, Krita. Krita has uh, vector support and bitmap support, but it will go into the category I think fits it the best. And some of the animation tools we already covered actually have some drawing capability in them. So if you're missing something from one particular category, let me, uh, or take a look at the other categories, it's probably there. But if I miss something entirely and it is available for free, let me know in the comments down below and I can hopefully add it at least to the list, but not the video. And also I'm going to be keeping these updated on an annual basis. So your recommendations will make it into the video for next year when I do the update. All right, without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at the best free pixel, vector, and paint applications available. And we're actually gonna do it by category. So first off, we're gonna come in here, you see we're in the 2D graphics application and I will throw this link down below. In the 2D applications, we've already covered off the various different 2D animation packages you see here. So what we're looking at today are the paint and image manipulation applications, the pixel art applications, and the vector graphics applications, and let's get started. I'm going to start off with the, um, what did I consider this one? Painting applications, I believe. Or, um, and the first one we've got here is the Autodesk Sketchbook. Now, Autodesk Sketchbook used to be uh, a commercial software, and Autodesk has actually made it free. It is cross-platform for... Um, Windows and Mac, sorry Linux people, uh, and again, it is now completely free. Definitely one to check out, very cool natural media. It's, it's kind of like um, virtual paper in some ways, but with some really good pen tools and inking tools available. Uh, next up we have GIMP. Now GIMP is the ultimate seminal open source uh, art application out there. This one's all about image Im Im uh, manipulation. In fact, the name GIMP stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. A lot of people have conventionally called this the open source Photoshop. Now, it is a long way from Photoshop in terms of functionality and usability, but both have improved massively in recent versions. So GIMP is getting a whole lot better. This guy has been around for probably 20 years now, uh, but it definitely is improving, and this does a huge swath of um, functionality. So, uh, photo retouch up to animated GIF generation. This, this thing kind of does it all. So this is the ultimate general purpose image manipulation program out there. And it's open source and cross-platform on all the major platforms. Next up, we have Krita or Krita. Um, Krita is a drawing package, package that since about two years ago has just kind of gone and like super fast in their development cycle. And since then, they've added improved text tools, they've added animation support, and they've added vector graphics support. This is a great open source painting application, great for um, concept art drawing, but with this new functionality coming in, such as animation, vectors, and you know text support, and so on, it starts becoming more broad in its functionality, which is very, very cool. And as you can see, it is available for Windows, Linux, and uh, Mac OS. Next up, we have paint.net. Now, paint.net is basically Microsoft Paint on crack. It is a super powered version, it's been around for uh, 10 or 15 years. It, it is one of my favorite simple, easy to use programs. They kind of took the paint user interface and then just added like layers to it, plugins to it, you name it. Unfortunately, it is Windows only, uh, but it is completely free. Uh, now, I'm just mentioning this to be complete. Uh, Microsoft Paint, some people absolutely swear by it. It's bundled with Windows. It is as basic as they get. Um, 
it's a pretty terrible program all around, but there is a cult dedicated to doing all of their work in Microsoft Paint. So I've added it on the list because if I didn't, this would make the comments down below. So yes, MS Paint. Yes, you can use it to make a game. No, you probably shouldn't. So next up we have, ooh, that's not a good landing screen. Uh, Draw IO. Now this is not selling it that nicely, but basically this is a uh, vector-based graphics application. We're into the vector programs now. Draw.io is very dedicated in what it does in that this is a, you know, let's do a new, you see here, you can do various different kinds of flow charts and diagrams. Not technically what we're mostly looking for, but if you're doing uh, flow charting for your application or a program flow, it kind of fit into the vector graphics category, so I included it on here. Plus again, it's free, which is always nice. Now in the topic of vector graphics applications, we've got Gravit Designer. Now Gravit Designer is available both in your browser and as a download cross-platform. I think all the major platforms. Let me just head on over to download to make sure. Uh, Mac OS, Windows, Linux, and then Chrome OS um, plugin support. So yes, Gravit Designer is available for all of them. It is a lot like the next program we're going to cover, but a lot easier to use and probably a little, well, actually quite a bit simpler. So a lot of the filters aren't there, etc. But if you're trying to get that vector graphics look, this is a great free program to start with. And you see vector graphics is basically where you're drawing with shapes instead of with um, pixels. And the cool thing about vector graphics is you can scale them up or down infinitely without any real degradation because it is an algorithmic thing. It is not a pixel based uh, format. So, and then next up we have Inkscape. Now Inkscape Inkscape uh, 1.0 Alpha was just released the other day. Uh, it is coming a long way. In Windows land, the performance of Inkscape has always been kind of terrible, but it seems to definitely be improving. Now, this one is uh, to vector graphics like GIMP is to raster graphics. It is the granddaddy open source free version that's cross-platform, available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. This is one of those actual anomalies where the Linux version runs a whole lot better than the other platform versions. Uh, but if you are looking for a vector graphic, graphics tool, this was definitely one to check out. It is a complex program. It can be a little slow at times and the, the user interface can definitely use a little bit of love, but it is improving greatly. With the 1.0 alpha, we're finally getting high DPI support, better performance, that kind of stuff. So uh, it is a massively improving program over where it was, that's for sure. Um, and I know a lot of people out there absolutely swear by this particular application. Uh, now we're getting into the pixel art segment of this resource, and this is an area where I'm probably going to be missing the most categories. I got the top ones. There are something about pixel art programs since they're relatively easy to create. There have been a bunch of them created. So we're just going to kind of do a greatest hits version. And the greatest hits version, the greatest hit period, is ASC Sprite or A Sprite. Uh, a Sprite is... Uh, 15 bucks if you buy it straight outright. And one thing you're going to find with a lot of these programs is they have a very retro looking um, UI. Not my favorite thing to be honest, but um, you're also going to see a lot of the same kind of functionality. Things like fat bit grid support, so where you can zoom in and it edit at the individual pixel level. Things like onion skinning for doing animations, uh, fixed palette control, and so on and so forth. And this guy is hands down, I would say, the most popular pixel editing application out there. Um, if you want to support them, again, it's 15 bucks. If you don't want to support them, you can download an old version or you can build it yourself from source code. Uh, next up, we have Graphic Scale. Graphic Scale is the same kind of thing, but with more of a Windows 95, 2000-ish interfaces. Obviously, I believe it comes out of Japan originally. Uh, they made it free in uh, 2017. A lot of the same stuff, and a lot of the functionality in here is actually from a different era where you're doing things like Twain device, like scanners to bring things in or creating icons or animated GIFs by hand and so on. But again, it is still a fat pixel editing level software that is now completely free. Unfortunately, this one is Windows only, uh, so there is definitely that issue. Now, next up, we have Graphics 2. Now, the only reason why I'm showing you the Graphics 2 GitLab page as opposed to their actual site is their own site is giving me some kind of a security error when I try to access it right now. So as you can see, it is open source. Uh, it is cross-platform. I'm not 100% sure on the platforms available, and unfortunately, I can't get a lot of detail from their um, GitLab page. And like I said, their website is currently down. But this one is one of those applications that is inspired by Deluxe Paint. Uh, Deluxe Paint, if you don't know, in the 16-bit era, I would bet 99% of games art was drawn using Deluxe Paint. 
So if you had an Amiga or Atari ST, the graphics for your game was probably done using Deluxe Paint. And then people just kept using Deluxe Paint. It was ported to uh, Windows platforms. It was like the tool of choice for bitmap artists back in the 90s. And a lot of modern day programs are kind of based on or inspired by Deluxe Paint. Now Graphics 2 is the most directly of them all. So next up we have Piskel. Uh, Piskel is a free online editor for animated sprites and pixel art. Once again, you've got uh, frame by frame animation drawing. Uh, you've got cloning. You've got um, tools here for uh, you know flood fill erasing, and it's pretty typical. You're working at that fat grid pixel level again, but this one runs in the browser, or you can download uh, desktop versions for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Um, but again, you can run this completely in the browser. You see the options available here, and it is. Uh, open source as well. You can export out to GIF, ping, sprite sheets, and so on. Next up, we have low spec pixel editor. Um, this guy is another one that runs in the browser. Very, very simple in scope. Fixed palette, fat grid kind of painting application. Uh, it's more about the palette control and low spec has a ton of predefined palettes available. So you see over here on low spec site, um, they've created retro palettes to like go along with if you're trying to recreate the Vic 20 or Commodore 64 or Spectrum kind of look. Uh, they have predefined palettes and their low spec pixel editor has support for those palettes directly inside. Very straightforward application, uh, runs in a modern browser such as Firefox or Chrome and there is no downloadable version of it. And that is it. That is today's list of 2D graphic applications. Now keep in mind, we've also got the 2D animation packages that we covered earlier. So if you were looking for an animation program, we have about 10 of those in this list as well. And then you can see here, we have a full list of links and simple descriptions of everything we just covered today. Now, if I missed anything glaringly from this list, uh, please do let me know down below. Again, the criteria is free, at least free in some functional and usable form. So if they have, you know, the current version costs money, but the previous version is available for free that works um, but if it's free but you have to buy all of the functionality that doesn't quite work so if you've got a suggestion let me know in the comments down below uh, coincidentally we are also looking at um, filling in the rest of these guys so this is an ongoing category and as you can see my uh, my roadmap of things to cover is pretty clear here so if there's a particular topic that you can see here that hasn't been done yet that you want to see me focus on be it IDE or game frameworks or audio tools name it let me know and I will hopefully make that my next focus in this series as well all right that's it for now I will talk to you all later goodbye